Great job. You guys can go to your seats now. Be real careful going down the steps. It is so good to have each and every one of you here with us this morning at Crossroads. We have come to just magnify and celebrate the risen Christ today. And we pray that he will touch your life in a real and tangible way. Are you excited about this morning? So good to have you here. How many have never been to Crossroads Church before? If you've never been to Crossroads, would you please raise your hand? Go ahead and raise them high. Welcome all of our guests this morning. So good to have you here today. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand to your feet this morning, and we are going to get started with some worship music today as we enter into the presence of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. What an awesome time to come together to celebrate and magnify the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the event that changed the world, the event that changed our eternity. We pray that you would be blessed, that you would be glorified. We pray that you would touch every life. And Lord, if there are those here today who do not know you as personal Lord and Savior, may this be their day of destiny. God, that you would draw them to yourself. You would redeem them this morning. And we give you praise for that now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.
Awesome job, guys. You can be seated for just a couple of minutes. It is so, so good to have you with us today as we celebrate Jesus. We pray that you'll be touched by his presence and drawn into a personal relationship with him. So, so good to have you. We don't know how many people are here, but we set out 1,300 chairs, and they're almost all full. Can you say <laughs> So we're glad, we're glad that you're a part of it. We're going to receive, uh, we're going to receive our offering in just a moment. So I'm going to ask our ushers to, uh, to get ready for that. Uh, we are, we, every week we just say thank you to those uh, who support the ministry. Uh, for those who are regular attenders of Crossroads, uh, I want you to look around this morning. You paid for this. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, that's, that's why we give, uh, because we want to be able to reach out and touch people, and I believe that is going to happen today. Starting next week, because our church has been growing and growing and growing, we are going to three Sunday morning services. All right? So if you come and be with us next Sunday, we'll, we'll be back at our, our home location there just across from Sand Flat Road. And we'll have a service we're calling the early bird service. The early birds get the donuts and the coffee. Come on, somebody. <laughs> That'll be at 8 a.m. And then we'll do another one at 9.30. And then we'll do another one at 11. The two later services will have uh, full kids ministry. So if you have kids to bring with you, those are the services that we would recommend coming to. And we would just love to have you become a regular part of Crossroads Church. And all the regular attenders make these folks feel welcome this morning. We are going to receive an offering today because it's part of our worship Part of what we do as Christians is not just to lift a song or a voice or to lift up a hand and say God's not dead, but together we unite our faith and our finances. We believe the church should be very, very generous. And because of the regular giving at Crossroads Church, we're able to support about 13 different organizations in our community every single month and also uh, organizations around the world. We're able to reach out and feed people, clothe people, and bring the gospel to people. And it's all because of your giving. If you're making out a check today, you can make that out to Crossroads. If you want to give by cash, you can always do that. And of course, there are offering envelopes every three or four seats. If you'd like to give by card, you can do that in the back. There's a little iPad. You can do that on your way out. I do want to set up some, uh, or just kind of let you know a few things. If you see this handsome gentleman over in the corner, Terry Rinker, wave at everybody, Terry. I'm glad he's awake. Come on. I'm glad he's awake this morning. <laughs> at least until the sermon starts, he'll say. But there is a, a photo um, shop on the other side of him. If you'd like to get your picture taken, we'll have photographers over there, and we'll make sure we can get those emailed to you, get your family over there, and uh, everyone looks so good this morning. So we want get to get your picture. Also, uh, if you have young children, maybe you need a place to, to rock them. We have kind of a makeshift nursery set up in the back there behind uh, those uh, black curtains there, some rocking chairs and stuff like that. But you just make yourself to home today, and it is so, so good to have you this morning. Let's pray over this offering, and then we'll continue with the music. Lord, what a blessing, what an honor, what a privilege it is to come and, and worship with all of these folks this morning. We pray, God, that you would take this offering. You would bless it, God, that you would build not just our church. You'd build your family here in Garrett County and literally around the world. And we shall give you just praise and honor and glory for that now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Well, it wouldn't be Easter without this song, Because He Lives.
sounded so good this morning.
Lord, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for forgiveness, Lord. God, we thank you that in you we're made whole. God, we owe our all to you this morning, God. Hear us, Lord, as we worship you, Lord. It's all for you this morning. It's all for you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence today. There's none like you. We bless your name.
place all of a sudden it is over it is done love is come love is one got you and what i'm running to no longer what i'm running from because you were wrongly accused your friends turned their backs and yours was bloody and bruised and you were left for dead and in your last breath you said father forgive them for they know not what they do then you died and you rose from the grave to the throne forever you are glorified christ we sing to you alone then you died and you rose from the grave to the throne forever you are glorified christ we sing to you alone Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. We praise you, Lord. You can be seated if you can today. Ah. <laughs> I knew last night, it was, <laughs> someone posted, uh, I think it was Brandon Hutzel posted last night about 10 o'clock, is it morning yet? And... <laughs> <laughs> I knew uh, I shouldn't try to sleep last night. It just wasn't going to happen. It is so, so good to have you here today. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thanks, guys. Didn't the worship team do a fantastic job? Hey, if you did not get one of these flyers that we had uh, delivered into lots and lots of homes over the past couple of weeks, they are on the, the welcome table in the back as you leave. Make sure you grab one, especially if you're new to Crossroads and want to learn more about the church. This is a great, great way to do it. We are going to go into God's Word today. We're going to take a, a trip back in time to the greatest event in human history. Jesus was crucified on a Friday, and we're going to pick up on the story on Sunday morning. A group of woman, or women who had been greatly impacted by his life got up really, really early in the morning, and they head to the tomb. The Bible says they were bringing spices with them that they had prepared for his body. It's important to note that the reason they were bringing spices is because they fully expected to find a dead Jesus. That's what they expected. And in Luke chapter 24 and verse 1 is where we'll start our scripture reading. It says this, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. I want you to understand something this morning. The stone was not rolled away so Jesus could get out. The stone was rolled away so the witnesses could get in. <laughs> he, did not, he did not need anybody to roll away that stone so he could get out. It says they went in that they did not find the body of Jesus. And it happened that they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? That's one of the greatest questions ever posed. And then the angel begins to preach one of the greatest but shortest uh, sermons ever preached. And he says this in verse 6. He is not here. He is risen. Can someone say amen this morning? The angel goes on to remind them that Jesus had told them this is exactly what would happen. And he says, remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And verse 8 says, they then remembered his words. Friend, on at least four occasions, Jesus Christ had tried to prepare his followers for what was about to happen. He told them exactly what would happen. The, the importance of that point is this. The resurrection was not God's response 
to man's evil plan. The resurrection was God's completion to his beautiful plan to redeem us. Can someone say thank you? I will tell you right now, you're going to have to be better than that this morning. I come to preach, and I need somebody to help me this morning, okay? So wake up. You got to wake up. Listen, we could have had the service at 8, but we knew some of you wouldn't be here. So we moved it to 10, okay? Next year, we will have coffee. All right, we will do that because I think we need it. Verse 9 says, then they returned from the tomb, and the women now returned from the tomb and told all these things to the 11 and all the rest. Verse 10 says, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. I love this. The first person that Jesus revealed himself to after his resurrection was Mary Magdalene. Mary was a woman that he had cast seven demons out of. I want you to hear this. He did not find the high priest. He did not find the religious leaders of the day. He didn't even go to Peter, James, and John, the apostles first. He found a woman, and he told a woman. Now, some people say the reason Jesus told a woman is because he knew she would tell everybody. I don't believe that for one minute. Let me tell you why I believe he found a woman he had cast seven demons out of and revealed himself to her first because he wanted to find somebody who knew what it was like to be redeemed. He wanted to find somebody who had come out of her own grave after she met Jesus. And when he, when he revealed himself, she would not doubt. She would believe because she knew what it was like to be resurrected. She had lived in darkness, and he had resurrected her out of that darkness into his, the kingdom of his marvelous light. And so he said, let me find somebody who knows what it's like to be born again. That's who he revealed himself to. So they run back and they they tell the other disciples and apostles and like typical men, they didn't listen to the women. Look at this in verse 11. And it says, and their words seemed to them like idle tales. The guys thought surely these women are, are making this up and they did not believe them. Verse 12, but Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed marveling to himself at what had happened. I love Peter, because while the other disciples are sitting around thinking that these women must have been uh, sipping a little too much on the communion wine, come on somebody, (laughs) Peter, something down deep on the inside of Peter sparked I love Peter. He surely did some foolish things uh, as he was walking and living with Jesus, but he also had more faith than anyone else. He was the only one who got out of the boat and walked on the water, and there was enough faith still living down deep on the inside of Peter that when those women said, he is risen, something sparked on the inside of him, and he threw on his, his denim jacket, he threw on his sandals, and he began to run for the tomb. The Bible says John saw the faith in Peter, and John got up and he followed him, and and, and John's gospel says he actually outran Peter. I love it. Even in the resurrection, the disciples are arguing, who's who's faster? Who's better? Missing the whole story, guys. They get to the tomb, and they find an empty tomb. If we fast forward just a little bit, Jesus then reveals himself to the rest. Look at verse 36. Verse 36. It says, now as they said these things, they're all sitting around at dinner. Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace to you. Can you imagine this moment? The last time they saw him, he's he's bruised, he's bloodied, he's battered, he's dead. The last time they saw him. He walks in, he says, peace to you. Verse 37, but they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your heart? Behold, he said, my hands and my feet, it's I myself, handle me. He's saying, touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as as you see I have. And while he said this, he showed him his hands and his feet and, and they still did not believe for joy and marveled. And he said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. I love this. They think Jesus is a ghost. 
like an episode of Scooby-Doo. They think he's a ghost, and Jesus is going to prove that he's real. Listen, Garrett County men, this is the way Jesus Christ proved his manhood. He said, give me a piece of meat made on a grill. Come on, and all the men said... And he ate it to show he's really bodily resurrected. And then to follow that up, he had dessert and said, give me some honeycomb. And all the women said, Jesus liked to eat. I like Jesus. It's it's good, good, good. Verse 44. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all the things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Jesus said, our Bibles, they're all written about him. Even the Old Testament, that's what he was referring to. He said all those scriptures in in the Old Testament, he said all those are written about him. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary. Say that with me. Say, it was necessary. It was necessary. Jesus said it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47. Why, Jesus? Why was it necessary that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem? This morning we are gathered among hundreds and hundreds of people here, but literally millions of people around the world are gathered to worship a risen Savior. In tiny churches out in the country, under trees in a village somewhere in Kenya, in a secret house church in China, in mega churches, in stadiums, and in fairground buildings. Hello. But why? Why would 2,000 years later we still be gathered? Why would 100 people show up and work nine hours yesterday to put this together and make this possible? It's not because we believe in a myth. It's not because we believe in a fairy tale. It's not because we're just worshiping a historical figure. But it's because he lives on the inside of us and he has redeemed us and he's worthy of our worship and our praise this morning. People of every language, every skin color, rich people, old people, poor people, Democrats, Republicans, healthy people, sick people. Today, millions of people will worship the risen Lord. We got to know Jesus was not randomly murdered by sinful men. He was sacrificed by his own father to resolve the tension between God's holiness and our sinfulness. I'm glad this morning that God loves sinners. All kind of sinners. White sinners, black sinners, straight sinners, gay sinners, city slicker sinners, hillbilly sinners, old sinners, young sinners, fat sinners, skinny sinners. Hey, God loves sinners. The resurrection was not God's reaction to his son's tragic murder. It was God's plan. And today we get to benefit from that plan. God in his infinite wisdom knew what a mess we would make of our own lives. And all along he had a plan. Let me assure you this morning, if you've made a mess of your life, my God has a plan for you. You see, in all of our wisdom, we've tried to educate ourselves out of the need for God. With all of our inventions and philosophy and our technology, we've said we're masters of our own destiny and we don't need God. But I want to tell you this morning, the politicians cannot fix this mess. Celebrities cannot fix this mess. We've turned our backs on God. The world is a mess, but God has a plan for redemption and that is to reveal his son to this nation and this world and he wants to do it through you. Can someone say amen? We don't need more education. We don't need more government programs. And we sure as heck don't need more religion. 
There are churches on every street corner in America, but the church has lost its passion. The church has grown content in punching the religious time clock, and the highlight of the service is the communion wine and the dismissal. That ain't church. Do you hear me? We need preachers who are going to preach like their hearts are on fire again, and we need Christians who are going to live like the Bible is true. We don't need more religion, but we need a revolution of love to sweep through our churches and our nations. Can't someone say amen? Why do I say we need more love? Because when God set out to change the world, he did not nuke it. He did not bomb it. He loved it. He loved it. He changed the world with love. Isaiah 53 and verse 7 says he was beaten, he was tortured, but he didn't say a word. Like a lamb taken to be slaughtered and like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence. Justice miscarried and he was led off. And did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare, beaten, bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked and threw him in the grave of a rich man, even though he'd never heard a soul or said one word that wasn't true. Verse 10 says, still, it's what God had in mind all along to crush him with pain. The plan was that he would give himself as an offering for sin so that he'd see life come from it. Life, life, and more life, and God's plan would prosper through him. In the King James Version, it says this, it pleased the father to bruise his son. Oh my, that's an uncomfortable verse at first glance. To think that somehow God would get pleasure in bruising, crushing his own son. But you've got to understand He didn't get pleasure for the sake of seeing his son suffering. It just wasn't for suffering's sake. But he knew that Jesus would be obedient. He knew that Jesus would do what he had called him to do, what he sent him to do in this earth. And Hebrews 12, 2 tells us that for the joy that was set before him, Jesus Christ endured the cross even though he despised its shame. I want you to know something. You are the joy that was set before him. Every time Jesus looked into the eyes of a man, woman, or child, he had to look past the pain of the cross to the joy that he would know. Listen, those who loved him and worshipped him, he knew he would die for them. Those who rejected him, beat him, and tortured him, he knew he would die for them. We're his joy. It was love that God used to change the world. This morning, when Jesus looks at you, he sees joy. The theme of our service this morning is redeemed. Let me tell you a few things that you are redeemed from. Hebrews 2 and verse 14 tells us that through his death, Jesus destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Now, when it says he destroyed the devil, it's referring to the power that Satan once had through death. Satan is certainly still active in this world and his future awaits him, but Jesus stripped him of the weapon of death. Through the resurrection, Jesus proved that he had the power of death and no longer is death an enemy for us to fear. Now listen, most of us would consider death the worst thing that could ever happen to any of us, but I want to tell you this morning, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, death now works for you. Jesus looked into the eyes of death and he changed its assignment. Instead of death being dark and doom and gloom and agony, death now is like one of the fine ushers at Crossroads Church. What do our fine ushers do at Crossroads Church? They simply lead you to your seat, your destination. And now, if you are a follower of Christ, death is not something to be feared, but death will simply usher you from this life to real life, from this life to eternal life, from this home to your eternal home. Death works for us now. 
Because Jesus declawed it. He defanged it. He took away its power. I love this. One of my favorite verses. Jesus said this in Revelation 1 and chapter 18. He said, or verse 18, he said, I am he who lives and was dead. Jesus is saying, make no mistake about it. I did not take a three-day nap. I was dead. He, he said, I was dead. But then looks at, look at this. He said, but behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I love the fact that Jesus amens himself. Sometimes when I'm preaching my guts out on Sunday morning and you stare at me like you're sleeping, I got to pat myself on the back and amen myself. I'm just following Jesus. He says, I was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore. And he says this, and I have the keys of hell and of death. Listen, for all who are in Christ, we no longer have to fear death. That's good news. Our sins are gone. The charges against us have been nailed to the cross. The blood of Jesus has washed us from all sin, and there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. We are born again. We've been adopted into the family of God, and our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. He goes behind us, and he goes before us. We are saved. We are forgiven. We are called. We are sent. We are commanded. We are instructed. We are anointed. We're blessed, and we're filled, and God wants to use us to make this world a better place. Can you say amen? amen? Listen to you. Listen, 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 listen. Just a minute. Just, just a minute right here. Right here. Hold on. Just a minute. Listen, for some of y'all that only come to church on Easter, I'm really, really glad you're here. We did this for you. Okay? But I love you enough to tell you the truth. This ain't all there is. To know in God. He died to redeem your life. He bought it back from the hand of Satan and from the grip of sin, and he expects you to use your life to do something for this, for him in this world. He wants to use your life for his glory. So next Sunday morning, you better get your carcass up out of bed. You better stand to your feet. Thank God you got breath in your lungs and say, I'm going to church because God has a plan and a purpose for me, and he's not going to reveal it to me laying in this bed, dreaming and watching. Jerry Springer reruns. He's going to reveal it to me when I get with other hungry, passionate people. God will take my life and use it for his glory. I'm having a good time this morning. This is all right. This is good. Now listen, before I close the message, there's one more thing I need to tell you that Jesus said after his resurrection. i got to share it with you. Come on, say, Pastor, share it. Go ahead, encourage me one more time because it's hard to share. Joe, Joe, say, share it, share it. Jesus said it. I'm not saying it. Jesus said it. I'm just reading what Jesus said. Mark 16, verse 16. This is after he's been resurrected. You think he's going to share some important words. These are important words. He says this, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Crud. I was going so good. You guys were clapping. Woo, yeah. Pastor, did you have to, did you have to end on such a downer scripture? Come on, tell us again how much God loves us. Come on. We'll shout for you. Listen. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a preacher. And the greatest preacher in the world is getting ready to ascend back to his father. And he says, tell the world this. It must be a meeting in the bathroom. It's like, it's like they're voting on the sermon in there. It's like one flush. <laughs> Never mind. All right, anyway, it's just, it's just, it's just, Jesus is getting ready to leave. He says, I need you to know this. I need you to tell the world this. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. This morning, the choice is yours. Will you put your faith in Jesus, knowing that it's by his great love he died for you so that you can be a part of his family? Or will you choose to reject him? I look around the room this morning. There are a lot of people I don't know. There's a lot of people here I don't know. 
I won't pull any punches with you this morning. I'll tell you flat out the reason that we've asked you to come here is because we want you to experience the same redemption that every one of us have experienced. Listen, Crossroads Church is a church full of broken people. I mean really broken people. Like, I'm telling you what, if you come next Sunday, you won't like some of us. Listen, I don't like some of us. Okay? (laughs) But we know we're broken. And so we come together to try our best to know God, to love Him, and to serve Him. And I'm telling you, I don't know a lot of you, but I do know the guy sitting in front of you. I know that that guy lost his home, his marriage, his wife, his business, and his kids because he could not say no to a bottle. I know that guy. I've walked with him through that process. And I know that there's, there's a woman sitting behind you right now, and, and she's made such horrible, horrible choices and decisions in her relationship with men, and, and she feels awful uh, about herself. But, but she got to a place that she forgot about herself and she found new life in Jesus. And if I could give her this microphone this morning, in spite of all of her mistakes and in spite of all of her past, she would grab this microphone out of my hand and she would say, I am redeemed. Do you hear me this morning? On the end of your row, there is a couple this morning who have felt the bitter sting of an affair, adultery, betrayal, but because they allowed the Redeemer to walk in to their mess and their situation. If they were to grab this microphone this morning, they would say our marriage is better than ever because we've been redeemed. I don't know you. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I know the people who are sitting around you this morning. There are women who've been abused by their father but they no longer hate him because Jesus has given them the ability to start over. There are people in this room who spent time in jail and prison. There are some who are not at our church this morning that I'll go to a jail this week to visit with them. And sometimes they're abandoned and forgotten even by their own family their friends, and our culture tells them their life's over because they've got a record. But if they could be here this morning, they'd probably admit to you they've made some awful choices. But they would also testify of the goodness, the grace, and the mercy of Jesus Christ to give them a chance to start over. They may lift a hand and with a tear flowing down their cheeks say, I am redeemed. Thank you, God. Listen, there are former stuck-up, religious, self-righteous church ladies who thought they could please God by wearing long skirts and bacon brownies for the bake sale, but one day the religious world got shattered and they realized God was not pleased by their pride and their self-righteousness. And now if you ask them what makes them right with God, they would say, Jesus plus nothing, because I've been redeemed. Come on, somebody, give Jesus a hand clap of praise this morning. If you've been redeemed, if you're thankful, if you're grateful this morning for what he's done in your life. Seems like all I could see was struggle. Haunted by ghosts that my past Bound up by shackles of all my failures Wondering how long it 
is this gonna last when you look at this prisoner and say to me son stop fighting a fight that's already been worse as I am redeemed you said so I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain that I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. Oh. When I hear you whisper, child, lift up your hand. I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet. Cause I am redeemed. You set me free. Yes. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away. ask everybody to bow your head this morning. The best we can count, there are 1,172 people in this building this morning. <clears throat> I ask God for a thousand people. Ephesians 3.20 says, He always does exceedingly abundantly above more than we can ever ask or think. The reason I asked Him for a thousand people was not so we could put that on our attendance chart. It's because then I knew there would be people here who did not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And before we leave this morning, I want to give you that opportunity. It, it, it's a simple prayer we're going to pray, but it's a serious step to take with your life. I want you to know this. I don't care where you've been or what you've done. I don't care how good you look on Easter Sunday morning. You were born into this earth a sinner, and you need a Savior the same as Dave Marsh needs a Savior, okay? This tie means nothing. This suit needs nothing. If I get down deep on the inside of me, I'm as dirty and as filthy as any person that was ever born into this earth, and so are you. And so today, like these people have testified that they needed a Redeemer, you need a Redeemer. Right now, I want you, if you want Jesus to come into your life and redeem you right now would you lift your hand please would you lift your hand 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 go ahead go ahead all around the room this morning you're making the first step today you're making the first step today dozens of people have their hands lifted today give them a hand clap of praise welcome to the family welcome to the family today 
Now listen, as I said, Christianity is not about a one-time event. It's not about Easter. It's not about Christmas. It's not about one simple prayer. But this prayer, this prayer is going to change your life if you will be serious about it and you will pray it and with all sincerity you can begin a relationship with God. Let's pray together this morning. Say, Jesus Christ. Go ahead and say it. Say, Jesus Christ. Redeem me. Redeem me from my sin. Redeem me from my past. I want to start over. I want to be yours. I want to be a part of your family. Take my life. Change it. Use it for your glory. Friends, if you prayed that in your minute this morning, you have just started a relationship with God. You can be seated for just a minute. We're going to receive communion together. Thank you, guys. If you did not get communion on your seat, just raise your hand and our ushers will get you one. Okay, but you'll have to raise it up high and keep it up for just a couple of minutes here so they can see you. If you did not get communion on your seat, lift your hand and we'll get you served. Before service this morning, I was talking with uh, Edna Forsyth, and we were just celebrating the morning, and she said, I feel so forgiven today. I recently heard a story about a, a Hollywood actor, and, and some of his actor friends were kind of teasing about receiving Jesus, and they said, well, what does it feel like to be saved? And he says, forgiven. Does anybody feel forgiven this morning? Uh, I feel light this morning. And oh, as Christians, if we could learn to live with this feeling of forgiveness that Jesus died, that we could walk in daily. Amen. Let's read. Go ahead and grab that baggie with your bread and with your juice. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians. This is Paul. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Today we're remembering Jesus. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As I read that, I said, Lord, I think it's, it's better to proclaim your resurrection until you come, because that's what we want to focus on. But let's not forget that death, as Pastor Dave said, is now just a tool, an usher for us. <clears throat> And Jesus died so that we could live. And other people who don't know Christ must taste of his death and receive his death so that they may live. So today, as you hold that bread, you hold that cup, you can even show it to your neighbor and, and say, we're showing each other the death of Jesus. This is Jesus. He died for you. Isn't it cool to know that when you partake of Christ in this communion, you're showing the people around you that you receive Christ. And we have been redeemed. We've been purchased back. Let's, as Jesus did, offer thanks and break and drink. Let me pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for our redemption. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the love that you have poured out onto us that we could be called sons and daughters of God. Brothers and sisters with Jesus, the firstborn of many brethren and sisters. Part of this family where we will not, we will, we will feel love like we will not feel it anywhere else on this planet, Lord. The love uh, that you pour into us, Lord, we share with one another. We thank you for it. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, which is represented in this cup that we hold. We thank you for the body of Jesus, which was 
bruised and tortured so that we could be made whole. We thank you. We bless it. We bless this communion. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and partake of the bread. Partake of the juice. When you're done, just stand, and I believe the worship team's going to lead us out with one more song this morning. so so glad that you've come to celebrate his resurrection with us now listen we've got two egg hunts going on okay we've got one for the younger kids that's all the way in the back you senior citizens stay out of there okay last week we last year we about never got an old lady out from underneath all those balloons it was awful had to get the jaws of life here it was a mess okay so old people stay out of there it's for toddlers only then we got one for the older kids over here now listen older kids if you receive a Jesus egg, you have to take it to the redemption table over there. Everything's redeemed here this morning. <laughs> you gotta t even the toys are redeemed. Uh, anyway, turn it in for, for a toy. So the kids are going to have a great time with that. If you didn't get your family's picture taken, or even if you're here alone today, you're part of the family of God, get your picture taken over there. And uh, if, we, uh, if we don't have your contact information, we would love you before you leave there's something called a connection card, probably under your seat by now. You probably threw it on the floor by now. There's a connection card there. And if you would fill that out, just leave it on your seat. We will pick it up. If you made a decision to begin a relationship with God today, on that connection card is a little box you can check. Just say, today I started a relationship with God. Please leave that on your seat. Fill that out. I personally want to call you this week and just talk with you and pray with you again. And make sure you understand the commitment that you've made here. Uh, it's, it's awesome, awesome, awesome. You have changed your life and your eternity. Uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, for those who are part of Crossroads kind of uh, crew, our teardown crew, we're going to meet back here at 6 o'clock to put all these chairs away and get this place cleaned up. So we want you to go have a great time with your family today. But if you can come back and help us at 6 p.m. tonight, we would love to have you. Everyone else, all the new folks, we'd love to see you next Sunday morning at Crossroads Church across from Sand Flat Road, either 8, 9, 30, or 11. We're dismissed, everybody. Have a fantastic day.